In this video, I'm going to go over the process of replacing a data drive in an Unraid array. There are a few reasons why you might want or need to replace a drive. If the drive has failed, or you just want to replace an existing drive with another or larger capacity drive. In my case, I want to replace all the 8TB SMR drives in my array with larger 12TB drives that are not SMR. If you don't know what SMR is, it refers to the type of recording technology used inside the drive. It stands for Shingled Magnetic Recording, where the data tracks overlap, so when writing data, the drive has to also rewrite the overlapping tracks, which can significantly reduce write speeds. There was a huge controversy which happened around April 2020, because Western Digital were not disclosing that they were using this technology in their red NAS line of drives, and the awful performance of the drives were causing RAID rebuilds to fail for some people. Seagate and Toshiba were also not disclosing the use of SMR in some of its lines, but neither were using it in any NAS-focused drives, so it wasn't as bad in my opinion. I'll leave a link to an article by Serve the Home in the description below for anyone who wants to learn more about this. The method of replacing a drive in Unraid is actually pretty simple, as long as your array is protected by parity. If you don't have a parity drive, then this method will not work for you. I would suggest either adding a parity drive first, or you can go through the process of emptying the drive, then replacing it, and moving the files back. But I won't be doing that in this video. The drive I'm going to replace now is disk 5. As you can see here, in this awesome little utility called disk speed, this drive is performing the worst out of all the 8TB drives I still have in this server. So I'm going to make a note of the serial number on disk 5, and then I'm going to scroll down and stop the array. So because my drives are hot swappable, I can actually do this without turning my server off. If your drives are not hot swappable, then you will have to shut down your server to do this. So I'm going to go to my server now and swap out disk 5 for the replacement. So coming back to the configuration menu, we see this notification that the disk is missing, and we see disk 5 here missing, and it tells you the serial number of the drive that it expects to see there. So this is generally what you will see if a disk has failed as well. So with a new drive installed, we can now select it from the drop-down menu here. And now you see that Unraid is telling us that it's the wrong drive. So the messaging here isn't that clear on what that means for you, but basically it's saying that it's the wrong drive, and then over here we have another warning. When the array is started, anything on this drive will be overwritten, because it's going to rebuild the data from that missing disk onto the new one. Now the drive I'm putting into here has already been pre-cleared, so you may have to do that yourself first. In my case, I don't. So I'm going to clear this notification, and if we scroll down, you'll see the Start button here, and next to it it'll say that it's going to start the parity sync and or data rebuild. So we know that it's going to do the data rebuild. So I'm going to click Start. Okay, now we can see the array is started. We have a notification here saying that the device contents are emulated, which means that we can still access the data that was on this drive, because combined with the other data drives and the parity, it knows what data should be on that drive, which is why it's able to rebuild it. And you can see we have more notifications telling us what's going on. We can see it's reading from all of the other drives and writing to the one we just replaced, rebuilding that data. And if we scroll down, we can see some more information on what's happening. So it tells you the speed it's going at in its current position, and an estimated time of how long this is going to take. Now for me and my setup, I know roughly this is going to take just over one day, over 24 hours. It's saying here one day and 10 hours. Um, I think it's going to be quicker than that for me, because it's only going at 93 megabytes a second here, 
um, but I know it'll go faster towards the end. So the speed is actually being limited by some of the slower drives in my array. So once it gets to its current position above the 8 terabytes, um, it'll start going much faster, like 120, 130 megabytes a second. And once it gets over the 10 terabyte section of this one drive, um, I'm probably going to see speeds of over 150, 170 megabytes a second. So depending on the drives that you have in your array, um, this could go faster or slower. So I'm just going to let this carry on, and we'll catch up with it in about 24 hours. So this has been going for a while now, and you can see the speeds are a little bit faster than they were earlier. If we scroll down, we can see it's been going for nearly 18 hours now. It's at 69%, and the reason it's going faster is because it's got past the speed limitations of those 8 terabyte drives. So I'll check back again when this finishes. Alright, the data rebuild is finished, and we can see it took just over one day, nearly 26 hours. I'm going to close these notifications, and we can see the drive is in there, all working fine. Now I'm going to go and uh, do this all over again with another 8 terabyte drive. So I hope this video was helpful or informative. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe. If you like this or any of my other videos, other than that, thanks for watching. <laughs>